What's up everybody, Joe Everest, The Fence Expert. Welcome to another update to the video reaction series. Before we get into this week's video, remember, if you find the video helpful or educational, entertaining at all, it would mean the world to us if you gave it a like. Also, if you're new here, consider subscribing and don't forget to hit that bell so that YouTube will let you know each and every week as we have new content ready for you. All right, with that being said, let's dig into it. Now this video itself is about 11 minutes, so I'm probably gonna skip forward on part of this. All of the wood posts that you see in front of you are four inch by four inch by 10 foot long posts. And they are all number two pressure treated lumber that is rated for ground contact. Any wood post that you set in earth absolutely has to be pressure treated and rated for ground contact. Yeah, so th this is actually a really great tip. So in pressure treated, just cause it says pressure treated doesn't mean it's rated for ground contact. Uh, if you're setting posts, you absolutely want those posts to say that they're rated for ground contact. The treatment is rated for ground contact. While it is absolutely mandatory that you use ground contact rated pressure treated lumber to set as posts, just because it is pressure treated and rated for ground contact doesn't mean that it will never rot. All pressure treated wood is, is rot resistant. The pressure treated ground contact rating will simply slow the rot. It will not prevent the rot. So in order to slow that rot even further. I agree with that as well. You know, I'll, I'll add a caveat to that. Any wood, you know, with the exception of maybe petrification, uh, any wood's going to rot, right? So it's just a matter of how long will the wood, will the oils within the wood naturally resist rot and decay. The first tip that I'm going to give you today is how to increase the strength of your wood posts that you're installing in the ground. Now, when most people install wood posts in the ground, they embed them in concrete. And the main point of embedding them in concrete is to add additional strength. But the inherent problem with concrete is it needs something to grip onto to really add strength. So if you simply add a wood post in the ground and pour concrete around it, there is not good frictional forces between the concrete and the wood post itself. And what that means is because the wood post is so smooth and so uniform and straight, it doesn't have a lot of... So I'm not so sure about this one. Um, I've seen this come up in different groups where uh, the idea is floated that for some reason the concrete may not hold the post firmly. And so in this, in this video, it looks like he's using screws or some guys will use lag bolts or some guys will, if it's a steel post, they'll weld rebar to it. I don't know that I've ever seen a post, providing that the concrete hasn't split, that could simply just be pulled out of the concrete. And not just wood posts for that matter. I mean, so a chain link fence post is round and smooth. So the concrete technically wouldn't have anything to grab onto. Uh, but the concrete does bond to the surfaces, right? So I, I don't know. I don't, I don't really buy into this at all. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, if, if you've had a, an instance where you could pull a concrete post out of, uh, or a wooden post or a chain link post for that matter, a steel post out of concrete, if it just slipped out, why don't you leave that in the comments below? I mean, I, it's, it's always, it's never too late to learn something new, I guess, but I don't know that this, I've never heard of it. To install the posts so they are stronger and sturdier when placed in the ground, let's discuss how we can install them so we can increase. I like this using Quickrete. Uh, it's going to make for a stronger concrete product. So consistent concrete, hole to hole. Uh, Quickrete's a, a good brand. You have others. You have Sacrete, you know, pre-mixed concrete products, but I like Quickrete a lot the resistance to rot. The number one mistake most people make when they install a wood post in the ground is they install the hole just deep enough so the bottom of the post rests on the actual soil itself. And this is a problem because the post is contacting directly with the soil. That soil is inherently damp and that dampness will be in contact with the bottom of the post at all times. Furthermore, if you receive any kind of rain event, that soil may become wetter and wetter over time. This is an extreme problem if you live in a place which has clay soil because that soil may be wet 365 days a year. And because that wet clay or the damp soil Soil is contacting the bottom of your wood posts at all times, it is going to eat away at the base of the post. So this this question came up when we were talking about, you know, the concrete rot myth. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen a post rot at the very bottom, you know, if it was set two feet deep and, and in the way this gentleman is talking about where the bottom of the post is still extruding past the concrete. Um, I would certainly encapsulate it. So when your post is set, you know, pull it up a couple inches, let concrete form underneath of it, um, encapsulate the post. I, I wouldn't go to the trouble of putting gravel below it if the idea is you're going to prevent rot. Like I say, so the rot, you're typically going to see the rot in the first several inches of, of ground depth or ground penetration. Um, I don't, I've never seen a post pulled up with rot at the bottom, but if you have, 
leave me a comment below. And that rot is going to slowly travel up your post and rot it at a quicker pace. So one way you can prevent that is by putting a three to six inch layer of gravel down underneath each post. The third and final tip that I want to give you for installing a wood post in the ground to increase its longevity and resistance to rot is to install the wood post with a foundation reveal. And this is probably the best bit of advice that I'm giving you in this video. I have watched multiple videos around YouTube about how to install a wood post in the ground. And they're all the same for the most part. They all include someone excavating a hole and they're either filling the hole full of quickcrete rapid set concrete or they're hand mixing concrete and they're shoveling the concrete into the hole. And then the concrete always ends at the surface. And this is setting you up for critical failure. That concrete will over time sink into the ground. Where the concrete meets the post will be the low spot at the soil line. And every single time it rains, water is going to pool around where the concrete meets the post. And the water is going to intrude in that little tiny gap where the concrete meets the wood. And it's going to over time trickle down and it is going to rot that post at a very fast rate. So here we have a simple eight inch quickcrete concrete tube. And these come in all different sizes. You can get eight inches, 12 12 inches uh, you can get them in 24 inches and in, in 36 inches and you know while this tube is the brand quick tube or quick creep tube um, these are also called sauna tubes you could find them just uh, with the name sauna tube as well and what this is is it's a tube form that you install above the soil line that you press into the top of your concrete and it allows you to overfill the concrete so the top of the concrete foundation is several inches above grade line i recommend at least a three inch foundation reveal, which means the top of this tube should protrude a minimum of three inches above the soil line. And what this does is it prevents water from ponding around the exact point where the concrete meets the wood. Because I have a three inch reveal on every foundation, what will happen every time it rains is the water is going to pool around the concrete, not at the point where the concrete meets the wood post. Using these concrete form tubes is a very simple process. You'll see every five inches I have a mark. Uh, skip ahead to where we see the actual end result. Curious to see how it finishes out. So I have a three inch reveal protruding above the soil line and I use a level to level it laterally But I leave the back of the foundation pitched slightly higher than the front of the foundation so the water That way any water from rain will not pull on the top of the foundation because it will be sloped and it will run off So here, here's my only issue with this, and we've done this in the past uh, I, when the client asks us to, majority of clients are gonna have a problem with seeing a concrete pier every eight feet throughout their yard. Uh, I absolutely understand the thought behind it. It's gonna keep, since it's, it's leveled one way, but it's a little under level the other, it's gonna allow water to shed off. It's not gonna pool on the post. Absolutely understand it. It's a great idea. My only thought is that I don't know, I don't know that customers would accept seeing concrete above grade every eight feet. But if the concrete, if you're willing to see it and or your con your client is willing to see concrete every eight feet, this is probably a really good solution. All right, guys, I appreciate you making it all the way to the end of the video. If you found the video helpful or enjoyable, be sure to give it a like. And also, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. So the YouTube sends you a notification each and every week when we have new content uploaded and available for you. But for now, I'm Joe Everest, the fence expert, reminding you that good fences make good neighbors.